Thank you, Madam President. Uh, colleagues and members of the public who spoke so eloquently on this matter, uh, I'm excited to, to present to you today a resolution that will mark 22, 2022 as the first year of a Juneteenth holiday in the city of Los Angeles. The exuberant echoes and loud cries of our ancestors are being heard today, marking a new page for black history in our city. Juneteenth, the acknowledgement of a, of a day that represents relief from the perils of one of our nation's darkest chapters. It represents the emancipation of African Americans from 250 years of slavery, America's worst atrocity. We were, in fact, denied our humanity by an alleged God-fearing nation. A date that carries significant historical reckonings for, our, for black Americans in both courage and resilience. The recognition of Juneteenth from the federal government and now with the second largest city in the US signals a changing tide, one that's long overdue in the name of equity, racial justice, and dignity. As a 71-year-old black man in America, I have lived the struggles and understand firsthand the toll that's taken on our people. In the words of the great Maya Angelou, still we rise. The journey for black Americans has been long and winding, filled with bruised and a shameful past. However, embracing the pain and remembering and honoring our sacrifice strengthens and unites us. In spite of the adversity and suffering, our culture continues to be one of purpose, promise, and hope. On this Juneteenth, I want to pay homage to my ancestors and past generations that paved the way for our communities to advance forward on a more dignified path. Let us pause this Juneteenth to own our history. From the good, the bad and in between, as through the trials and tribulations that resilience of our humanity radiates. While Juneteenth is about confronting injustices honestly and openly, it's also about acceptance, allowing current and future generations to learn and grow from our country's past transgressions. This is a beautiful moment in time. People, especially our youth, are finding their voices in the fight against atrocities. Humanity is reinvigorated and is leading the way to achieve a more fair and equitable treatment for all people. The significance of Juneteenth has come out of the shadows and into the light of the, into the, light of the rest of the world to understand and to celebrate with us. The faith, vigor, and resilience of our African American community is unshakable proving time and time again that we stand ready to overcome the injustices of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. As we head to the weekend, uh, I leave you with one of my most memorable inspirational quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King. We will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness make a mighty stream. Colleagues, I urge you to vote aye on item 21. Happy Juneteenth, City of Los Angeles. Thank you, Mr. Price. <laughs> Mr. Harris Dawson. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair and members, and thank you, Mr. Price, uh, for bringing this to us this morning and, and the mayor for stepping forward and making sure Los Angeles was one of the first cities to have a formal recognition of, of, of Juneteenth. Uh, I, this holiday is tricky uh, for me as an official thing, because I grew up in this city where Juneteenth was unofficial, where we didn't, nobody asked for permission to take the day off. We just took the day off, and we did what we were, we were gonna do. Um, and, and there's something that feels special about this, uh, although I'm happy to support this uh, today. Uh, you know, Juneteenth and, and the fall of slavery in this country is a reminder for what we can accomplish when we struggle, when we don't accept the status quo, when we don't accept things that are obviously wrong and uh, seem like they will never change. You can imagine generations of folks lived in slavery uh, with the idea 
that one day we're going to overcome this, and uh, Juneteenth I I is a marker for that. I am struck, though, and I, and I, and I want to make sure I, I say this in public, I am struck by the irony of where we are today. So just today as we're discussing Juneteenth, a man stood 20 feet from me at a podium holding the battle flag of the Confederate Army. The most deadly struggle in the history of the United States. Still, we, don't, we haven't had a war yet where more people died than in the Civil War. A person just today held up that flag. Um, the, the, I'm reminded of the history of Juneteenth. Uh, there are the sanitized versions. The, real ver the sanitized version says it took the Army some time to get to Texas to let people know they were free. In fact, the actual history is that the White House sent not one, but two emissaries to the states to give them the documentation. Those people were killed before they got there. That's why the federal government had to send 2,000 soldiers to Texas to notify Texans. And then you open up the paper and you look at some of the things that are happening in Texas today. And so I think this holiday is a great marker for what we can accomplish. We can do big things. We can overcome uh, our biggest challenges when we focus on them. So I'm happy to support uh, this and the mayor in the city of Los Angeles celebrating Juneteenth in an official way. Mr. Wesson. Thank you, Madam uh, President and, and members. I too rise to support uh, this matter. It should be supported, but more importantly than that, we need to reflect and to think back. I want the people that can hear my voice and, and see me to imagine that you're walking to see your relatives and that you're excited and you have your whole future in front of you. Or you, Mr. Kokorian, are going on the first date with your wife or something exciting like that and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you're grabbed, you're handcuffed, your ankles are shackled, you were thrown into the black belly of a ship that smells like crap and piss and vomit. And your body is chained next to somebody else's body on this thing that you don't even understand what it is. You just know that it's big and it's wooden. And then it begins to move and it shakes and it rocks, and you have so undescribable fear. You're listening to voices that you don't understand what the hell they're saying. You are so unsure. Your life has been turned upside down so bad that a good friend of mine tells me the story that what a third of these enslaved people on these ships did, a third of them willed themselves to death. Imagine how difficult is that to just mentally will yourself to death. Now, Another third of these enslaved people in the black belly of this ship packed together like sardines were very defiant and very angry and very mad. And when they were taken to the deck of the ship to exercise and get sunlight because the enslavers wanted to maximize that they made as much money as they could make. And in order to do that, you need to have your property exercise. Another third of the people on this ship jumped overboard. They killed themselves. They would rather feed 
themselves to the sharks than to be enslaved by people they didn't even know. So yeah, one third of the people on this ship will themselves to death. Another third of the people on these ships killed themselves. Many people, and I've been part of conversations where I've heard individuals say, well, my great, 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 great uncle is from Ireland and he was a prince, or my great, great grandmother was from Scotland and she was this. Well, guess what? I can't tell you who my great, great anybody was, but what I can tell you is that there were a third left on that ship and those were the people who refused to die and Mr. Harris Dawson and Mr. Price and myself, we are proud defendants of those who refused to die. And that's why we're here. All of their dreams, all of their desires, wanting to be a great hunter, wanting to be a great farmer, wanting to be a meddlesome man, all of those great dreams were just stripped and taken from them. And it's now our responsibility to ensure that those dreams are realized. In a world that has been constructed to ensure that black people fail. That black people at best live a life of mediocrity. If you truly believe in your heart and your soul that what was done in the past was wrong, then let us freaking change it. The systems in place in this country today are systems that don't treat people of color fairly. Our educational system. I have to read something 10 times when maybe you only have to read it once because the school I went to as a kid sucked, but I read it 10 times because I want to be the best that I can. The pandemic showed us that our health system is significantly flawed by black and brown people being sick by more than any others. It also showed us that our financial system is just effed up because when poor people were expecting loans so that they could keep their businesses afloat, they didn't get jack. The LA Lakers got a check for $5 million like they needed it. They sent it back. The systems need to change. So what I say to each and every one of you, yes, I gladly and with pride rise to support this holiday. But without pause or hesitation, I'll tell you, you can take this holiday, give me my 40 acres and a mule. In fact, you can keep the mule. <laughs> but we'll take this holiday and we should take it as the beginning, the beginning of creating a new life and a new world where all men and women are created equally. And I'm sorry to take too long. I wasn't going to speak, but I got wound up. In an apartment in Pasadena is a nine-day-old little boy that I have not seen because I had COVID that is damn handsome. He is very alert, he is very smart, he's got great parents, and the world is his. 
please let us do our jobs so that we can afford Harrison James Wesson, nine years old, and the millions of Harrison James or Henrietta Jameses, the opportunity to fly as far as their imagination and their abilities will take them. We as black people don't want you to give us anything other than an equal opportunity. So I rise to support this measure and urge each and every one of you to make a commitment to make this country become the great, a greater country than it already is. Thank you for allowing me way too much time. Thank you. And members, with that, let's go ahead and vote on item 21 as amended. Madam President, for the record, resolution Price Harris Dawson Wesson number 21C has been circulated and is also before council. Okay, let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. 